Hey everyone, it's Beth. It's the start of a new year. It's the time when we get a chance to decide how do we want this year to look like? What, what is it that we're expecting God to do both in and through us? And some of us might be finding ourselves in the middle of circumstances that we don't like, that we didn't ask for and that we can't control. But there is a truth out there that God won't waste anything. I know that for sure. It was 2016 when I was diagnosed with the breast cancer gene and I did not like that story. I couldn't control that story. I, I didn't understand why it was happening. I can remember the doctor telling me you have an 87% chance of developing breast cancer in the next five years. You have a 50% chance of developing ovarian cancer in the next five years. And it wasn't a very difficult decision for Todd and I to decide to prophylactically undergo the double mastectomy and hysterectomy. And I can remember thinking to myself on the other side, on the, on the shy side of that story, if, if we do this well, I can look more like Christ on the other end of it. I get that feeling in January. Like if we do this year well, we can look more like Christ at the end of this year, regardless of the stories that walk into us. He won't waste anything. And I learned a couple lessons during that season I want to share with you today. The first one is just how much people matter. When people love you well, you don't forget it. And I think about all the times when I put accomplishment and tasks over people, but if I'm too busy for the people that are in my life, like what exactly is it that I'm doing? I can remember the people that took time out of their agendas to, to make space in their life to to stop over and visit me or to serve my family with a meal or to pick up the phone and call and see how I was doing. I can remember still, you know, years later where I was sitting and what I was going through when, and when a perfectly timed phone call that someone responded to the prompt that God gave them in their heart to reach out and encourage me. The, the second lesson I learned is in those conversations, how important vulnerability is that actually vulnerability demonstrates maturity. It was so tempting in my flesh when people would ask how you're doing to say, I'm doing great. This is great. There's no way it was great. I was, I was in a lot of pain and healing and confused, and it was not great. To act like something was okay when it wasn't is woefully immature. And when I decided to be vulnerable in those conversations, then we actually got exchange and exchange is the most powerful indicator of a human relationship. And as I began to exchange with people and shared with them where I had questions, where I was confused, where I was hurting, then I allowed them to do the same. I, I, I learned in that season how important my attitude was and my spirit of gratefulness and how actually gratitude, it, it, it changes everything. When I decided to wake up on a day and be grateful for sparkling water and clean sheets and soft pajamas and kind doctors and all the things that I, I could train my eyes to have, to have notice of, I could sense a, a lightness, a, a, a gift that God gave me throughout the day. When I focused on what was not going okay, what I was unhappy about, what I was easy to complain about, the whole day felt long and hard. And that, that, that lesson and that season impacts me still today. I still, I today wake up and think to myself, what can I be grateful for? Even in circumstances I don't like and I can't control, what is it that I'm grateful for? And I watch it change everything about it. I learned in that season about how rest is a choice, how it was so tempting to kind of skim off the top of life and just frantically rush from thing to thing and miss out on what might be, what a, what a moment might actually be pregnant waiting for me to discover and have give birth to and how I wanted to slow down, to pause, to, to think and listen and and have experiences with the people that were in my life that were more meaningful. The moments when I rested and thought and paused and listened and talked with people were the most important moments in that season. Why don't I do that more often was the question I asked on the other side. I also learned, this was hard for me to learn, that pain actually makes us mean. I'm not naturally a mean person. So imagine the, the shock of my family when I would at times get really mean. And I realized it was in direct correlation to the pain I was feeling. And in the aftermath of that particular season, I can remember I was at one of my son's track meets and there was a woman that was sitting um, in front of me a little bit, a couple rows down, and she was being very mean to this, I'm assuming four-year-old grandson that was with her. And the old Beth, would have judged her for the way she was talking to that child. In fact, I probably would have tried to slip that child like a lollipop or something out of my purse. But the new Beth who had just walked through the season I had been through, 
who God wasn't going to allow me to waste any of it. The new Beth was thinking, if she's that mean, I wonder where she's hurting. I wonder what's what, where she's in pain. And now I have a new opportunity to minister to that woman instead of judge her for her actions. And I, I just am so grateful for the concentrated classroom God gave me in that season and the, and the lessons that came from it and the person that I am as a result today. And as I look into this year, 2020, I think there's gonna be all kinds of things in this year, things I don't understand, I can't control, and I may not like. But if I sit in that classroom, if I listen, if I exchange with the Lord, if I'm vulnerable, if I rest, if I put people first, if I do those things, there is just no telling what he has for us.